GBR12935, is it a supplement you should check into or should you pass on it? Find out right now. Hey, what's up guys, it's Josh here. Today I wanna to do a little review on this GBR12935. Now this is a destroyed container. I'm not really gonna be showing it too much in this video, but generally this is what it would look like if you were to order it. So I got this from Alcon Chem. Some of you guys may know that from the Modafinil analog. So I was looking through all the stuff he was selling on eBay and I came across these two. So it's basically this one, GBR12935. And there's a more famous one called GBR12909. Now, both those are pretty much the same exact compounds, but the GBR12909, uh, it has like two fluorine atoms on it. And apparently that one is patented as vanoexerine, vanoexerine. So I'll try to put that on screen so you can see. So both of these have kind of been a little bit studied. The GBR12909 was a little bit more prominent. He also did have access to that one as well. But for me personally, I like to avoid the fluorine atoms if I can. So this is essentially um, GBR12909 minus the fluorine atom. So there's little to no information on this online. This was actually really expensive. Like, you know, if you wanted to get some modafinil, I think you could get it for 32 or $38. I think this is only one gram and this cost me about $80. So it was pretty, pretty expensive. So what it is is a potent and selective dopamine reuptake inhibitor. I guess it's supposed to stop dopamine from being reuptaked. So essentially you have just a lot more dopamine in your system, which is similar to a lot of ADD drugs and also a lot of hard drugs as well. A lot of them will have this quality, but the unique quality with this one is that it like stops dopamine from getting released. So instead of getting this flood of dopamine that you would get from these other drugs, it's kind of just a slight dopamine release. So apparently it's supposed to be much more potent at being a reuptake inhibitor versus cocaine. And cocaine is a very well-known dopamine reuptake inhibitor. So it'd be crazy to see that it was stronger, but also it led to not that big of an increase of dopamine in the brain because it also stops dopamine from getting released. So it has this two-pronged effect. So I was very curious to see in one aspect, it's way stronger than other drugs, but on other aspects, it like blocks dopamine from being released. So I kind of didn't understand what to expect. And guys, I've tried this probably about three times. I tried it two times a while ago. It immediately just numbs up your mouth, which obviously sounds like other illicit drugs. I get you, it lasts like 45 minutes to an hour. It's crazy numbed out, it's crazy strong, but I do feel a little bit of dopamine stimulation. I, I guess I would say I feel that, but I also feel just a little bit of weirdness, a little bit just off when I take this, very slight. Um, I do think maybe for some people you'd have more of a benefit versus other people. I'm not too sure. Um, the reason they created this, I guess, was they were supposed to, they wanted to like map the dopamine signals in your brain. By this being a potent dopamine reuptake inhibitor, it would like flush the brain full of dopamine so they could do like MRIs and stuff on it, but also wouldn't be that crazy of a dopamine release agent so that the person would be addicted or high or something. It's just enough to kind of, I guess, flash dopamine in the brain so they could see it on some MRI machine. So that's basically what it's created for guys. And yeah, this is a very interesting compound. I wish it wasn't so much money. It really didn't do too much for me. I thought about maybe trying it with other kind of dopamine things to kind of see if I could get some extra special effect. I don't know, but um, so far I just kind of feel a little weird with this stuff. And I, maybe there is a little bit of dopamine stimulation. Like when I did take this yesterday, I was like driving somewhere. And a lot of times if I take a something with a lot of dopamine boost like I'll start moving my jaw around and I almost did that slightly with this which is weird because I didn't feel like euphoric or up or anything like that so anyways guys for me this was going to be a pass uh, maybe it would work good for you I just wish it wasn't so much money if you were to get it try to capsule it um, because it just numbs out the mouth so crazy strong so uh, maybe there is some use for this in some situation. I don't really know, but I just couldn't really find a good use for it. I don't like things that make me feel even a little bit weird. So, you know, without it having much positive effect and me feeling a little bit weird, I'm just probably going to steer clear of this one. But um, maybe that GBR12909 is better. I mean, I would just assume that the fluorine is kind of just going to change how it works. Like, I don't think adding fluorine to a stimulant is going to make it more of a stimulant but it would change how the stimulant uh, works. So if you would add fluorine, it's not gonna be like a better stimulant. 
but it might make the stimulant work a little bit differently. So that's from my understanding, that's how fluorine works when you put it with stimulants. So anyways, guys, this is gonna be a hard pass for me. I definitely recommend those modafinil analogs if you can get your hands on them. They're pretty much the best from Alcon Chem. They're reasonably affordable and they last all day. So anyways, guys, that's been my review of GBR12935. Not my favorite. What do you think of it down below? Have you heard of it? Have you not heard of it? I'd be very surprised if you had because there is no information on this one at all. So anyways, guys, we're on the road to 50,000 subscribers and I couldn't do it without any of you guys' help. You guys are the best. I'm having a great day out here. Hopefully having a great day at home. See you all in the next video. Peace. And there is a more famous one.